Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the esteemed FaceTime with Leaders, an initiative by World Development Corporation. I'm Sunny Pancholi, anchor at World Development Corporation. FaceTime with Leaders is a platform for industry titans to share their experiences, thoughts, ideas, and best practices in order to inspire one another and future leaders. In a nutshell, we attempt to encapsulate the multi-decadal learnings acquired by these industry leaders. We also hope that by conducting these FaceTime with Industry Stalwarts interviews, we can bring together a global community of eminent personalities. By bringing together such visionaries on one platform, we hope to play a part in inspiring the lives of other leaders. Great learnings from great leaders undoubtedly assist everyone by identifying, nurturing, and using the trade secrets that are proven success formulas for many. And this is what we aim to achieve with this sessions, which are a gathering of industry stalwarts and a knowledge sharing community. We have one such personality on FaceTime with leaders with us today, Mr. Rajesh Kumar. He is a highly accomplished senior management professional with over two and a half decades of experience in the field of change management, business analysis, project management, business implementation, and investment advisory. He has proven expertise across various domains, including corporate banking payments, cash management, financial markets, financial accounting, and investment banking. He has a track record of leading major organizational restructuring change projects and process change with the implementation of best industry practices. Currently, he holds the position of vice president and serves as the head of business change management and business implementation Welcome to FaceTime with Leaders, Mr. Kumar. Thank you, Sunny. Uh, first of all, uh, a warm welcome, uh, warm greetings to all the viewers. Thank you very much, Sunny, for the quite an in introduction. And uh, it did summarize uh, my experience well. Uh, it is my privilege to be uh, in front of you to share my experience and views. I hope it's going to be informative. Pleasure, sir. So, Mr. Kumar, could you please let our viewers know some of the biggest difficulties you have faced during your professional life and have taken a lot of learnings from? All right. So, my professional life and the learnings from it. I think it's a quite a good question to start with. Uh, well, um, while a short stint of my experience was into marketing in early days of my professional life, a significant part of my overall experience has been into three different uh, spectrums. Uh, first one being um, something that I would cherish and I um, express in my memory are those days when I used to be a trader and a fund manager. Uh, it was for eight years when I did the trading in forex and commodities and was uh, this market was definitely challenging in many ways. And uh, uh, this is when I picked up uh, technical analysis expertise um, and a lot of learning uh, in terms of financial risk management. Um, the second um, uh, stint, uh, larger stint, a significant one uh, was uh, into business analysis. I would say it is a bit, a little less than a decade, uh, but it was into uh, the software industry, managing large projects, programs, and it was for one of the uh, one of the leading U.S. banks. So. Um, I faced tough times and uh, backed huge learnings in project management, people management, um, time management, and uh, overall the business risk management as well, um, which definitely helps me in uh, the progression thereof, um, uh, prioritizing uh, and addressing to the risk uh, involved in the changes or any business operations. Um, and the third aspect of it, uh, the third stint, I would call it, um, uh, which is an ongoing one. Um, it's a professional journey into uh, business implementation and change management. And I worked for one of a uh, multinational bank, and I've uh, had uh, I've had led many change projects. And uh, trust me, uh, leading um, large organizational changes is very very challenging. Definitely, it needs a, a lot of uh, entire top management sign in and support and sponsorship without which implementing large changes like this is very, very difficult. And uh, most of these projects are very sensitive in nature and uh, uh, primarily because they all end up in kind of in change on the people side. 
So if you look at a, um, a graph of a change process by itself, usually uh, it is in kind of an inverted bell curve uh, where uh, the very first and the very common phase of the change itself is a lot of resistance and uh, denial. So this resistance often becomes uh, comes out primarily because of uh, the uh, fear of unknown from the people. So as a change manager, I uh, it's it's a big challenge uh, for me to overcome uh, roadblocks and uh, resistance and to educate the stakeholders uh, upon the urgency on and the need of the change. Right. So this phase, usually people uh, is in the denial mode, then there will be an outburst, and then there will be a phase where people explore the possibilities and slowly they start accepting the change. So the entire journey of a change process itself, one of my biggest learning is that um, I've learned uh, there are some changes which usually takes a few weeks to a few months to even a few years where it is very difficult for us to plan, implement, execute, and monitor the entire phase of change, uh, which deals with a lot of uh, human capital, right? So uh, the best learning that I took from the change management process in my entire career is where, where a change knocks your door inevitable, then it happens overnight, okay? The planning, the entire phase of planning and implementation is it, it vanishes it doesn't even have to happen uh, but the change is so inevitable people change okay so one of the very recent example i can quote is um a large organization especially in india uh, they were trying to replicate the working model especially the work from home model um, trying to adapt what the westerners and the uh, european countries already have um, so during this process, there were a few companies who, uh, who um, immediately adopted this. There were a lot of, lot of companies who were skeptical and doubtful about the way to implement work from home model in India, primarily because of the um, cultural background, the workforce in India, most of them are from the middle class and the lower middle class. Um, the infrastructure at the home office may not suit, primarily the mindset of the Indian workforce these were the critical topics that were discussed. It took a quite a long time for people to slowly adapt. And I've seen project managers um, implementing large change projects, the transformation of um, moving from full-time jobs to work from home model, the flexi work models. Uh, it usually happens few months to few years. It is, trust me, it is very, very difficult. People who work in this project, they have to do a lot of uh, impact analysis, business analysis to convince the top management to execute this uh, process. But you know what? The pandemic, just two days, three days, it changed the entire world. The companies who wanted to move to work from home, who does not want to work, move from work from home, who are already working on the transformation, everybody completed this in a matter of two to three days. So this is a big learning for me. If you, there are certain changes which you can plan, but there are certain changes which will come with force where the inevitable knocks your door, you change automatically. So this is where I heard, I got a learning that it is not only important that in a change process, you need to explain what is the good part of what is the benefit of the change, but it is also important you tell people what will be the adverse impact if you don't change? I think that makes a huge difference if we fasten up the pace. So I think this is a huge learning as part of my entire career, um, how a uh, world can change overnight. Back to you, Sunil. Right. So that's a great start to the interview. And I must congratulate you for the exceptional interpersonal skills that you have. Uh, okay. So continuing with our conversation. Uh, your work profile is variegated with a diverse set of professional skills, including business chain management, business analysis, project and uh, program management, and a lot more. What do you owe your multi-skill speciality? Um, okay, so it is true. My journey has been multifaceted with uh, varied shades at different points in time. Uh, when I look back academically, uh, I've done biology at school. I did defense and strategic studies at graduation. I did international business at MBA. 
in fact i even tried accounting uh, of course uh, due to various reasons i had to stop it but i have done cfa first level so um, i have continued to do various other certification you won't believe i have got right from project management to data science i have done everything whatever interests me at various point in time and time so that's part of an academics but when it comes to the professional life it's even the same blend um, i would say i started off with uh, marketing i turned out to be a trader and fund manager investment investment advisor then it was um, i started up an investment advisory service way back in 2004 when startups were not a uh, buzzword and i ended up as a financial analyst for some of the um fund accounting firms in us large us firms uh, and i moved into it as business analyst came out as an expert in corporate banking cash management and payment systems and uh, i took over as a uh, uh, head of uh, engineering team and then moved as um, head of change management and business implementation that's where i'm here today i um, am an vice president in one of a multinational uh, bank Uh, heading the change management and business implementation uh, projects so um uh, sometimes i pack myself uh, for the path i have taken and the fight i have put up today it it doesn't look easy for me uh, yet i made it look so simple uh, to swim against the waves so uh, i think that's a good job <laughs> uh, i done and uh, for the versatility um, uh, the journey and the knowledge i have acquired through this Uh, i would owe this to two different factors one is um, the family environment i grew up uh, which taught me so much of uh, uh, human values and situational awareness and uh, the second one would be the ncc uh, in my college days which taught me which cultivated basically uh, discipline um, ethics and uh, chin up attitude i think that's that's something that uh, kept me Uh, fighting uh, to come along this journey beautiful journey and uh, obviously it takes a lot to be a stalwart <laughs> uh, not just outside but inside as well uh, a straight question to you and a very simple one what is your success mantra uh, <laughs> if you ask me i don't think i had any um, punchline uh, to follow or i i did not have an, a success formula but uh, there are certain traits that i followed maybe i think uh, i will call some of them out uh, which might be of some help for others as well uh, very first thing is uh, uh, learning is a continuous process i strongly believe in this i have tried to uh, i tried my best uh, to upskill myself in various uh, uh, different streams um, be it technology soft skills or uh, leadership i've continuously kept myself up skilled i've done so so much of trainings it's just not learning things i try to put them into practice so a uh, very important thing is the learning is a continuous process it has to be throughout um the second thing uh, i would um, um, say is keeping yourself abreast of current situation i think um, staying relevant to the situation uh, is very important so that you are not left behind you don't have to be the leaders but you you should be the uh, you should be one among the um, one among the crowd which uh, picks up stuff early i think you should keep yourself abreast of the current trend and the last one is definitely um, being an early adopter so um, the world is very fast eh? so we definitely need to be one of those early adopters it is okay to take risk sometimes by picking up some early things uh if you have to fail fail fast i think that's that's the key it will cost you less than the cost you will incur if you are very conservative in a fast paced world i think that's that's the key okay so if you have to fail fail fast so these are some of the things i would uh, i i follow maybe this contributed for my success i would say so do you envision fintech taking over traditional banking in the coming years oh fintech over the uh, banking okay um all right so historically uh, every industry has undergone uh, changes and uh, their business models have taken different avatars mm, generations who have seen uh, industrial revolution it revolution information revolution today it is data revolution 
everybody thinks our traditional model is at risk. But time and again, humans have stood up, at, they've shown resilient and caught up with speed. I think this time it's different ball game altogether. It's dis digitization. That's the buzzword. Yeah. Digitizing bank and financial transactions, which stand very tall in front of banking industry and of course to the government today. It's a challenge. But I think what fintechs can offer today is um, basically the ease, access, um, convenience, transparency, and more uh, affordability, I would say. So more than anything, I think uh, it's the uh, factor that gives the end customers, it feels like world in your pocket, right? So that's kind of an experience that FinTech view today. And uh, open banking model has enabled every online business to share the data. And today, right from insurance, investments, microfinance, and embedded finance, uh, everything is at user's fingertip, right? And on the other side, if you look at the uh, uh, traditional banking model, uh, banks have huge operational expense. Uh, they have holdings with the central banks, right from our uh, eight, uh, running ATMs to other transactional expenses, which leave the banks very little uh, options to compete with the fintechs. Uh, but it is important to understand that we have a we have evolved uh, um, over more than a century. Uh, and we've built a very matured, uh, regulated and governed, well-governed uh, banking system. So uh, today, fintechs basically wanted to act like a bank and banks wanted to act like a fintech. I think somewhere down the line, very soon, no, not later, I think we will hit a, a, a middle ground um, where we will adapt to the security and the regulations of a bank and the offerings are going to be as uh, best as the fintechs. I think we will hit a middle ground there. Um, so I will tweak your question a bit, Sunny. It's not a matter of fintechs taking over banks. I think they both will go hand in hand. They will find a middle ground. But it is more going to be banks and against banks. The early adopters are going to win. The, the banks who will hesitate to pick up or who struggle to pick up on this, they're going to struggle a lot. I think that's the answer. Rightly said, Mr. Kumar. Uh, so that brings us to our next question. And uh, here it goes. Have you ever felt a better need for ESG integration in any of the job roles and responsibilities you have been entrusted with? Oh, definitely, yes. Um, um, as part of my journey as manager and leader, some of the roles that I have played in the past uh, have demanded these responsibilities. It is just that uh, we are doing it under different names or forms. Um, today, we are certainly in need of integrating these responsibilities into leadership and uh, management roles uh, under the banner of ESG. I'm glad that it has come to a state where it is a norm or a mandate for organizations today. Um, having said that, uh, I, I believe uh, it is more imperative to in integrate ESG in top management roles where uh, there can uh, never be a better time than this. And certainly it's a paradigm shift and I'm happy to be part of this transition. Um, I have, I've definitely played a lot of roles which demands uh, uh, integrating this ESG um, as part of my roles, yes. Okay, great. Uh, so what are the most significant changes with technology you have seen in any of your industries or business facets? And what do you see ahead with the advent of technology like IoT, 5G, AI, ML, blockchain, or Web 3.0, etc., cetera, etc.? Cetera? All right. Uh, well, um, I've been into in uh, technology side as well, but uh, uh, I don't know if I've seen the entire spectrum of IoT, 5G to Web 3. But definitely, I've uh, I've seen some of the uh, widely adopted technologies in banking industry. I have closely involved in uh, cloud technology. Uh, today, banks and other financial institutes are investing heavily on moving their IT infrastructure to um, the cloud-based technology, um, which enables banks and other financial institute to um, uh, improvise their security uh, efficiency. Um, and resilience to the IT infra, uh, IT services disruptions, I would say. Um, 
not only that, uh, cloud also allows bank to get their manual uh, repetitive tasks automated, resulting in faster application output or um, better customer experience. So uh, with growing um, regulatory requirements and customer expectations, banks have very little uh, risk tolerance. Um, uh, they need to comply with the stringent data security, privacy rules, and at some time uh, staying competent in the market demands uh, these institutions to move uh, into secure, secured, uh, more secure platforms. Um, the greatest advantage of cloud platform is that uh, it helps banks to take advantage of the huge data set that they deal in the cloud uh, that can be uh, widely used for AI and EML uh, transformations. Um, so uh, basically the um, cloud is enabling banks to step into uh, uh, artificial intelligence and machine learning uh, based service offerings. So that being said, um, AI and ML are extensively being used in banks, uh, banking sectors, finance, uh, financial uh, uh, industries, uh, primarily to monitor the risk management, marketing, um, data retention, data protection, uh, process automation, algorithm on trading, uh, whatnot. I think uh, there is quite an uh, uh, expanse growth in this field that the banks and financial institutes are taking an advantage already. Um, I could clearly see more and more banks are uh, uh, developing services based on A and ML. And uh, in a survey uh, among the top uh, 35 banks uh, in, the, in the world, at least 27 banks uh, uh, declares that they've already implemented uh, artificial intelligence uh, in some form or the other in terms of front office functions, back office operations, uh, trading or portfolio management, uh, somewhere in the, in, in the spectrum of uh, service offerings, I think they've already adopted. And uh, I think this is the way forward as well. So um, uh, cl cloud is something that we bank on and the data that we are going to uh, fiddle with, I think that is going to give a big hand on converting the uh, bank op banking op uh, offerings into AI and ML technologies. Rightly said, Mr. Kumar. Uh, okay, so viewers would like to know that since you are now an ESG and corporate governance expert, what values do you aim to inculcate from your existing into your new role? Okay, um, first thing, I don't know if I should call myself an uh, ESG expert, but still it's, it's a long way. Uh, the world is uh, evolving and uh, all of us are learning, um, but still, um, I am part of um, multiple different uh, com uh, committees as a committee mem member in uh, corporate social responsibility and uh, diversity and inclusion. One of the biggest pillar in DNI is the Pride Committee, which supports LGBTQ uh, uh, community. So I have always felt the importance and uh, uh, I've contributed to in, in these roles as leader in terms of being uh, socially very responsible. Um, driving equality in terms of gender neutral HR policies, employee engagement initiatives, um, measuring employee emotional index in terms of uh, attrition management. Uh, these are some of the key uh, initiatives that I've directly worked on uh, that were initiated by me. Um, so um, right from reducing the um, uh, carbon footprint, waste management, renewable energy, better employee policy, everything is being now measured. So I've been part of some areas in, in my current roles and um, definitely uh, organizations are counting on what they're doing and uh, we are also contributing in a larger way. Uh, only thing is uh, sooner we're going to see uh, a global standard in way the organization must measure these. So that will tell us how good we are today and what is the right path to take. I think standardization of um, ESG metrics is going to be the next uh, way forward for us. Um, um, so I'm, I'm there already. I'm contributing in most of my current roles. Um, in a, in, a, in a, On a different note, Sunny, I would also wanted to call out. Um, uh, I'm currently part of a business unit uh, which reports investment performance uh, to large financial institute and fund managers uh, along with the attribution reporting risk reporting, solvency reporting. It's also the ESG reporting that we are working on. It's a new offering that we're doing. 
So uh, ES is um, already in integral part of my role. So uh, this is where my ESG uh, certification and uh, direct from Inter Directors Institute is going to add value. And I'm I'm looking forward to contribute more in my roles in terms of ESG. Great, great. That was so insightful of you, Mr. Kumar. Uh, and I'm sure our viewers would learn a lot from this interview. Obviously, this is just the tip of the iceberg. Uh, you cannot share each and everything of your two and a half decades of journey into 30 minutes. But yes, this culmination of your experience uh, will make them learn a lot. Okay, so this brings us to our last question, which is uh, we are building the Global Thought Leaders community for cross-pollination of knowledge and a community of independent directors for having better corporate governance in the country. So what are your thoughts about these initiatives taken by the WDC team? Oh, oh Sunny, I should definitely say it's a brilliant initiative. Uh, I cannot thank enough the World Development Corporation for uh, mobilizing the idea. And I'm glad to be part of this community. Uh, bringing thought leaders and experts from various industry, various walks of business together to strengthen the board level skills across country is not an ordinary initiative, I would say. So I'm sure members like me in this community will certainly be a great value add to the board roles across organizations. Great, great. Mr. Kumar, that was uh, a learning experience and I'm sure our viewers uh, would definitely learn a lot from uh, the, the insights that you have shared with us today. And uh, it was fantastic conversing with you and I'm confident that your insights will inspire the future leaders. So thank you, Mr. Rajesh Kumar for joining us today and we wish you the best for your future endeavors. Moreover, Trust that this initiative by Directors Institute has unquestionably expanded the participants' understanding and enriched their minds. Thank you, Sunny. It's been a pleasure uh, talking to you and with the viewers today.